Lana. There's a group of rhino, white rhino here. Lying on a copper show. This is just amazing to see. I'm right on the edge of their comfort zone. If I move any further towards them, they could charge. And if they did turn and charge towards me, what I've got to do is hold my nerve and not try and uh, just outrun them, because I've never managed to do that. You've got to stand firm, face it, hold that nerve, and then at the last minute, dive to the side. Bah! And they're happier now, and slowly they move away. No, Good. I tell you what, I'm right at the bottom of the African food chain here. Every predator around will be able to see and smell me. And I want to get moving pretty quickly. And they get this parachute off. If you're lost out here, the first thing you need to do is to find a landmark or fixed point to aim for. And for me, it's going to be that mountain. On the shoulder of the mountain, I can see a glacier. That means meltwater forming into streams and rivers. And rivers means farms, villages and people. Elephants up ahead. I'm not sure how many they are. Looks like a, a breeding herd. Large herbivores such as elephant, buffalo or rhino can kill if disturbed. I want to be pretty careful of these guys. And look, this young bull has now spotted me. And this is quite an uncomfortable position. But he's turning away. But elephant charges in Africa are actually quite common. And, if, and he's definitely checking me out. I try to move away from the herd to show I'm no threat. But now, they're challenging me. And that's the matriarch of the herd. The matriarch always moves to the front of the herd, ready to attack. She's not happy now. And every time I try and get round, she's like backing me off. And they've all now just stopped and turning and looking at me. She gave me like a shake of her head. It's telling me she's annoyed. But I think they're going to move off this way now. Nope, they're coming around. They're coming around this way. Guys, we need to back up a little bit. And they're just sizing us up here. But I'll tell you what, this is a battle I don't even want to get involved in. I'm going to head this way. Gotcha! Yeah! You can tell when an elephant's about to charge. They'll often flatten their ears against their bodies and curl their trunks. <laughs> If this happens, don't just run in one direction, but turn sharply to the left or right. Because of its poor eyesight, the elephant may continue to charge right past you. In hot climates, if you try to walk in the heat of the day with no water, you may last no more than four hours. But if it's a choice between life and death, there's a survival trick I was shown by an old ranger. One thing you can do if you're stuck out here with no water source at all is actually drink the fluid from a fresh elephant dung. Pretty disgusting, but it could save your life. <coughs> it's a real last resort. There can be harmful bacteria in that water, but if you have nothing else to drink, it could buy you extra time. Not one of the better drinks I've ever had. The mountain seems tantalizingly close, but I've still got a lot of ground to cross, and I need to cover as much of it as possible before it gets too hot. But just as I'm really starting to move, I make an amazing discovery. Wow, look at this. Just a massive old volcanic crater. I think I can see holes in the crater floor. They could be man-made. The fastest way down a shingle face like this is to scree run it. You need to dig your heels in and then use your hands for balance, zigzagging your way down. Oh, that's fast. Must have inhaled half the mountain. In dust, my hands are shredded, but I'm down. Ugh, stuff is so crusty and soft. And this bit here that looks like tar uh, is actually salt. And it might not be the type 
Uh, you know, you're used to it on your table, nice and refined, but it is actually salt. And if I break a bit off here, I can actually use the crust of this uh, to help help heal my cut. Uh, will replace lost mineral salts that I'm losing all the time through sweating. And also, it'll actually act as an electrolyte if you've got diarrhoea. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this with me. It was much easier getting into this crater than getting out of it. And I've used up a lot of energy for effectively a bag of salt. <sighs> Whilst I've been in the crater, it looks like the savannah's predators have been busy. Those vultures are a clear sign that something has fallen prey. There might even be a meal for me. Those vultures I saw before are on the ground now and quite close. They should have taken flight at my approach, but they haven't. And that can only mean one thing. Look at that, you see that? Those vultures there, they're so full of what they've been feeding off, they can't even take off. They're just like waddling up the hill. And this is what these vultures have been after. Look at this, uh, dead zebra. There's definitely a lion kill. 이런 걸 전에 본 적이 있나? 내 생각에는 좀 자극적인 것 같군. 안 그래? A kill like this can mean food for the survivor, and there are ways you can tell if the meat on it is fit to eat. Vultures are the first sign, as they will only eat fresh meat. Check also for maggots. The lack of maggots tells me that this kill is hours rather than days old. And if the carcass smells rotten, move on. But this meat is fresh and an excellent source of protein. And this is so tough, this skin. But look at under all of this. I go peel the skin back. That is all going to be as fresh a meat as I'm going to find out here. Even though it doesn't taste that magic, this is the best chance of me getting some protein. And this is actually how a lot of early man and opportunistic following out where lions would eat. It's a nasty bit, and I keep the last little bit of this steak as much as I think I'm going to be able to eat in the next hour or so, and stick it in my pocket and eat this bit before it goes off. One last bit. Awesome. This is much more like it now here. This is looking looking much greener. And this should be the start of what will eventually lead up to the foothills. Uh, also, these yellow fever trees are good indicators that I'm near a water source, uh, as are actually those baboons over there that always hang out uh, near good water. Uh, so what I'm going to do is try and find this water source and then follow that up into the mountains. Baboons are also a good sign that there are no major predators around. So I'm hoping to get some well-needed rest here. Using my flint, I'm trying to light some dry elephant dung, which I'm using as kindling. It should burn pretty well. OK, come on now. There we go, there's a little spot. At night, the temperature here drops to 45 degrees. Having a fire in the bush not only keeps you warm, it deters predators and other animals. And it should keep the mosquitoes away. But lighting elephant dung is not always that easy. <coughs> oh, tell you what, the fumes of elephant dung is really not nice. My plan is to follow a river upstream. Anywhere else in the world, I'd head downstream to find people. But here in Africa, entire rivers can disappear underground. So I'm going up towards the fertile slopes of the mountain. That sound is unmistakable. Hippos, they're one of the biggest killers in Africa. If I got in this river here and tried to cross this, the bottom line is that I'd die. And the reason is those hippos, 
They are unbelievably dangerous. <laughs> and that's just a warning to me to stay back. That's her first warning. Half a mile upstream, things look a bit more promising. This actually isn't a bad place for me to cross. Uh, it's quite fast flowing and it's quite shallow. It's rare to find hippos in shallow water like this. This is probably my best bet for getting across this river. This stuff is just so, so slippy. And what I've always been swept down in some of the deeper pools. Take it easy, guys, here. OK, we'll cross. It might seem a lot of effort, but for me, the most effective way of following the river is to get in it. I can tell I'm getting higher up now, just because it's freezing cold. The gradient is increasing, and that means steep waterfalls. But it's still easier for me to climb them than leave the river and climb some of the sheer precipices around them. Even though this waterfall is quite cold, climbing it was so much fun. And having fun is a key part of keeping your morale up. Hey, look, look. Look at these, look. These fixed lines coming straight off. It's probably a way that local farmers send feed across these ravines. This is my first sign, though, that there might be people somewhere near here. But I just need to find out whether this rope is strong enough. Well, there's only one way to test it and just go for it. It's well over 100 feet to the top of this ravine, and the only way I'm going to climb up these ropes is the hard way, hand over hand. There's not much technique or finesse here. It just takes strength and confidence, and never look down. Oh, that's what I was hoping for. Some cabins and civilization of some sort. Where are you? 